I'll be so glad when, oh, when well, the sun goes down. When the sun goes down, I'll be so glad when, oh, when well, the sun goes down. When the sun goes down, I ain't all that sleepy, but uh -huh. I wanna lie down. Well, I wanna lie down. Shalom, all praises to Yahweh, Bahasham Yahushai, Bahasham Racha Kodash, the more honor to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone that rule well, and they bring the word and doctrine, Shalom, and in peace, with that being to the elect of the nation of Israel. So we're going to get into this when the sun goes down, the Lord willing if everything went to plan, it's actually, in the, it's actually the background music to this, unless I've got a copyright strike, or a copyright infringement, whatever you call it, whatever it is, it's just different things they can hit you with. Sometimes copyright, they'll actually keep your video up, but it'll just say this is this song. So anyway, enough of that. Going into this, it just proves, it bears witness more so, when obviously that's Judah, Yahweh, bears witness that we are that people, man. I'll be so glad when the sun goes down. But when the sun goes down, I'll be frustrated again. I want it to, the sun to come up, and then the sun comes up. It's a perpetual cycle of curse. Right, and that's that's what we get. Let's get that first. Before even getting into this, let's let's get a, a context behind it. Micah seven and nine. I'll bear the indignation of Yahweh because I have sinned against Him. Until He plead my cause and execute judgment for me, He'll bring bring me forth to the light, and I shall behold His righteousness. So, the whole reason we went into slavery, the whole reason we're in a mass incarcerated at disproportionate rates. Talking about the so-called Black, Hispanic, and Native American which are the Hebrew Israelites of this Bible, okay? Contrary to the teachings of the world, that is actually the truth. So going into this, because uh, I was listening to, um, there's an old song I knew from when I was a bit younger. It's called Early in the Morning. So it was Early in the Morning, When I Rise. Yeah, that's how it starts. If you search up Early in the Morning prison song, uh, it'll come up. But that is just, uh, it just resonated with me anyway. This was before the truth. Before I was even in you know, woke Pan Africanism, Gaviism, all of that. Which is not bullshit altogether. There's a, there's a there's a zeal of something. A zeal of something. A zeal for defending your people or standing up, but there's no there's no holistic benefit in it. Alright, it's interesting to hear some ideas, you know, go through some uh, chronicles, some writings and that. But really, you know, if you're not talking about the Lord you ain't talking, man. Right, if he doesn't come back to ultimately, yeah, where the Israelites went through this because we disobeyed, now what do we do? Now, there's no solution. A lot of that shit is just talk, man. It's like an echo chamber of so-called woke Negroes. And you also, you also have similar things for the Latin tribes, the Native American tribes, so-called, so-called. But uh, unless, you've, unless you've got a solution, which is really you know, coming back to this faith, then... It's, it's fruitless, man. If this work, if this thing is of the Heavenly Father, it shall stand. If it's not, it'll be overthrown. And surely all these Pan-African movements historically have been overthrown. But the truth has, <coughs> has stood and will stand the test of time. So let's get into this. Without any further aid. Deuteronomy 28. And read from 64. So in fact, we'll go up and we'll just get a little, little verse up here. Deuteronomy 28, 47. Because thou servest not Yahweh thy power with joyfulness and with gladness of heart for the abundance of all things, therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies, which Yahweh shall send against thee, in hunger and in thirst and in nakedness and in want of all things. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he hath destroyed thee. For in want of all things, I mean you'll be desiring everything, it means you'll be lacking, lacking all things. So you can't go and get some meat, you know, whether that be a vegetable meat, you know, just food, you can't get food, you can't get water, you can't get clothing, until you go to this man, right, this man E, who's been put up above us, and E is shot for E, saw, right, E, dumb. Right? So I'm looking for the word want here. Want chasar chasar. So the want lack, want of lack of. Right, so it says want three times. And then this again to lack, be without, decrease, be lacking, have a need, 
to lack, to be lacking, to diminish, decrease, to cause to lack, to cause to be lacking. So if I use this um, word now in the English, oh, I want that, oh, I want that guitar. It means I lack that guitar. That's what it means historically. I used it colloquially. I want that guitar. It's lucky. If I say, let me just say it as simple as I can. I want that guitar. Today's terms, it means that I would desire it. I would like to have it. In an older language, or the same language in an older time, you said I want that guitar, it means I am lacking it. Right. So, you'll be in want, in lack of all things, including hunger, thirst, so your food, your water, nakedness, your clothing. So then he should put a yoke of iron upon their neck until he have destroyed thee. And just to prove this even more, one minute. Uh, look, I'm about to put in yoke of iron on Google. I've not put yoke of iron Hebrew Israelite. I've not put black Hebrew Israelite yoke of iron. I'm putting in the word yoke of iron. And images. It comes up with Deuteronomy. Get that. So like, I can't click on it on my, my internet first. So no. If I scroll through, there's this Bible. Look, there it is. All oh, we have to put is yoke of iron. And it's not like that's a, a biblical phrase only, an iron yoke. But, and the internet is flooded with this, and that's that's a false doctrine. And everyone everyone teaching that we're in 2021, man. So what happened? I remember this this proud uh, denying the northern tribes as the northern tribes, saying, oh, we'll be out of here. And then it was 2020, and I messaged... I was it was before I was in GMS and really had a not in GMS but of the you know, of the body of the doctrine and I was just if ever if, if someone was an Israelite I was like oh come on you know we're all Israelites yeah I think a lot of brothers went through that but I was like so what happened he was like yeah yeah well it, it began yeah 2019 the coronavirus you know oh it began and that's us coming out of this new Egypt now, he didn't even believe it's the new Egypt and he's through so forget him. So that's a false doctrine. The 400 years is not talking about us in the Americas. Right, it was longer than that. So you see that that's Judah with a yain. And this happened. Right? This isn't some you'll see certain things like this. There are certain certain ones where clearly it's dramatized or it's, it's new. Like it's a reenactment. But this shit happened, man. And this is why we were so glad when the sun would go down. Because we'd have to stop. We wouldn't have to stop. We'd finally get to stop working. But then you've also got the stress. Look, it's there, man. It's everywhere. Here, there, and everywhere. And I remember this one. There is not. See, this truth is out there, man. We all, it all bears witness to you. So this is what they'd actually... It was for ox. Like as it says there, an ox yoke. A yoke was used... For animals, it was also used for servants and slaves. But then the way, the way that E went about slavery compared to all other ancient civilizations, a different, different level, man. Different level. So let's get back in the scripts. So Deuteronomy 20, 48. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies, which Yahweh shall send against thee in hunger, <coughs> and in thirst, and in nakedness, and in want of all things. And he should put a yoke of iron upon their neck until he have destroyed thee. Now in Baruch, it talks about how we were, we were sold to the nations, not to destroy us, but for our chastisement. So it wasn't for us. And then you say, oh, yeah, that's a country down there. And it's like bugging out. Destroyed can have many meanings. If I say, oh, for fuck's sake, you know, I was working on this project, it took forever. Does that mean I'm still working on it and it's going to take me the whole of eternity? Sometimes you have to understand like how Jake speaks. Just like it says the curses would be upon us forever. There it is, 46. And they should be upon thee for a sign and for a wonder and upon thy seed forever. But we know we've got a kingdom to come where we won't be cursed. And that kingdom will last for literally ever. So it's just a, a Jacob phrase of figure of speech. All right, so the curses will last for a long, long, a long last time. Yeah? And we'll be destroyed. We're mentally destroyed. Now that's why we're known as the dry bones of Ezekiel. Now that's why we're suffering in the valley of the shadow of death, which is Mystery Babylon. Right, that Egypt again with ships. And that's the ultimate fulfillment of that. Because you know, Egypt was our first captivity, and then we came out as a big, big nation. 
and this while we're the sand in the sea, this new Egypt, it will be our last one. It's like a sandwich of Egypt. But you start with it, you had all these little filler ones, and then we end with the big one. So we were destroyed mentally, spiritually, and psychologically, which really goes back to the soul, the suke. We were destroyed in our soul, and we were always known as, where do you get soul music from? All that means is Negroes singing. <laughs> Negro spiritual. All right, soul music. It's all to do with the, the suke of Jake. Right? And they, you know, certain, um, certain things will resonate with Jake, because he's a Jake. Like I didn't, I knew I was a Jake, as in I knew where my forefathers came from, but I didn't understand it as, um, sorry, as in, you know, of Jamaica, so-called. Yeah, but I didn't understand it as us being the Israelites. But it still resonated with me, I understood. And that's that's the same thing for all the Pan-Africans and what I was talking about. There's something with them resonates, they know they are a great people, but they can't quite put their finger on it. And yeah, they're putting their finger on Ethiopia, on Kemet. All these are the places which they <laughs> they're not you you good good friends man the ancient Egyptians either so going into this that's what that's all I wanted you know, you're, because you served not yeah you were put in slavery because you didn't do that so now let's do 28 and 64 and Yahweh shall scatter thee among all people from the one end of the earth even unto the other. And there thou shalt serve other gods, which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, even wood and stone, by going into idolatry. And among uh, which um, yeah, is broken down commonly in Israel, in the nation, is wood being Christianity, that pagan cross, and stone being the uh, Kaaba stone. But there's more than that. Here you have us in India, worshipping different gods. You have a lot of people now following the beast man's ideologies and they might not physically and literally bow down to an idol an engraved thing but they're still committing idolatry they're still putting something above their primary goal to serve Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai right so even that is idolatry so it represents idolatry right verse 65 and among these nations thou shalt find that ease neither shall the soul of thy foot have rest but Yahweh shall give thee there a trembling heart and failing of eyes and sorrow of mind and thy life shall hang in doubt before thee, and thou shalt fear day and night, and shall have none assurance of thy life. And it's about to go into the whole the verse that I, I based the whole lesson on. It says, In the morning thou shalt say, Would God it were even, aka, yeah, I'll be so glad when the sun goes down. Right? In the morning thou shalt say, Would God would the most high, it were evening. And that word it means uh, I wish it was. Okay? And at even thou shalt say, Would God it were morning, for the fear of thine heart, wherewith thou shalt fear, and for the sight of thine eyes which thou shalt see. And we saw the, the yokes, meaning just now in this video, we've seen the yokes. And we can't imagine, you can try and imagine, but there's a lot of, that's, that's just the shit documented, man. And there's some a lot of wicked shit documented. You have to imagine how much more was done that's not even been, you know, chronicled or not even being penned and in verse 68 it says and Yahweh shall bring you into Egypt again with ships now before we finish the verse get to Exodus 20 and 2 I am the Lord thy God which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt out of the house of bondage right so Yahweh thy power brought thee out of the land of Egypt this is literal out of the house of bondage so Egypt was synonymous with bondage when we heard Egypt we thought about the time that we were in slavery now there's a time that uh, Joseph, Yawasap, was ruling, and uh, Jake, when, when Israel, the whole nation, <laughs> which wasn't a lot of us at that time, weren't in slavery, uh, Joseph's brothers uh, weren't in slavery, and then um, yeah, you can go into the whole history, how the certain vessel, or the, what do you call it, an, an item, was put in Benyamin's bag, a sack, and then well, you can, you can go into it, man. And I'm not about to re-tell re, re the story. But basically, then you had the, the rest of the brothers went back and then they ended up all coming in. And then it goes from there. And then there was a new Pharaoh which knew not Joseph. And these are the times when we start getting into Exodus. 
when you're dealing with Moses the Levite. But that Egypt has a synon has a uh, a symbolic or a, I was gonna say synonymous. It's not a connotation. That's what I'm looking for. It has a connotation of slavery, and it tells you that. Deuteronomy 28 and 68 And the Lord Yahweh shall bring you into Egypt again with ships By the way wherever I spake unto thee Thou shalt see it no more again And we've not seen it again And there shall, and there ye shall be sold unto your enemies For bondmen and bondwomen And no man shall buy you So you have to conclude When we went into slavery again uh, Who these people were sold to Are not our best mates Okay Revelation 11 and 8 it says, And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom in Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. And that's talking about the beast that ascendeth out the bottomless pit. And the bottomless pit goes into Europe, right? And he ascended out in the Renaissance, meaning, you go into that word there. Renaissance. All it means, obviously, you can read that, but literally, rebirth, right? <clears throat> the re, again, and nasi. Isn't to be born. So if you have prenatal, postnatal, the I can't think of too many. Of this, um, beginning with N specifically. Nation. That's a good one. A nation. Where they came from, Naski again. Yeah, that word Naski. So this was the rebirth, the re-nation. You know, when the nation came back up, that nation of Edom. Came back up into power after being bound for a thousand years and cast him into the bottomless pit as we read in verse 3 and shut him up and set a seal upon him they should deceive the nations no more so the thousand years should be fulfilled and after that he must be loosed a little season and he was when he came up back into power that loosened little season is talking about that renaissance when he came back up into power and after that that's when he did this revelation 11 and 7 and when they shall have finished their testimony the beast that ascendeth out of the bottomless pit Shall make war against them and shall overcome them and kill them. Right, like it says, destroy them. Does that mean every single Israelite is absolutely, literally dead now? No. The, the great majority are spiritually dead, psychologically dead, and mentally dead. Dealing with that, and it says, verse 8, And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. And you have many, many, actually, quite a lot of people. Historically, Jake people have gone into this and said, and not, not the, uh, let me give an example, Malcolm X. I right, said, you're the dry bones, you're Lazarus. And he started getting into all this in one of them speeches. The, um, you know, the 48 and nothing but another right, part of that same race of devils that came out of the, the um, basically the clefts of the rock. Yeah, in other words, he says, Ezekiel 37, 1 and 2, the hand of Yahweh was upon me, and carried me out in the spirit of Yahweh, and set me down in the midst of the valley which was full of bones, and caused me to pass by them round about. And behold, there are very many in the open valley, and though they were very dry. And that's Jake, spiritually very, very dry. So that's what it means when it says, you know, the dead bodies lying in the street, a great city, spiritually called Sodom, and we all know why. And Egypt, again, that bondage. And the, the ultimate time that Jake had a yoke of iron upon his neck, and was in slavery, was in that Egypt, was in this new Egypt, that mystery Babylon, man. And we were given that 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 spirit of fear. They're talking about a nation. And we weren't given the spirit of fear, but of love and of power of a sound mind. But Jake, in general, was put in fear. And so I read, I'll actually read that again, verse 67. In the morning thou shalt say, Would the most high were even, and at, the, and at even thou shalt say, with the most high were mourning, for the fear of thine heart, wherewith thou shalt fear, and for the sight of thine eyes, which thou shalt see. And Yahweh shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships, by the way whereof I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. And there you shall be sold unto your enemies, right in this new Egypt, sold unto your enemies for bondmen and bondwomen, and no man will buy you, no man shall buy you. Now it doesn't mean no man's going to purchase you. Now, a lot of Christian so-called apologists will like to go into it and make out like that's what it means. It's not what it means. Right, the Hebrew word here is kuna. Okay, and qu kuna, it says to get, acquire, create, buy, possess. To get, acquire, obtain. Of God originating, creating, redeeming his people. And now it's not talking about the, the most high doing that, it says no man. But it's talking about buying back, 
like you have, um, I think it's in Nehemiah, we'll get into it when I finish this. It says, possessor of Eve acquiring, of acquiring knowledge, wisdom, to buy, to be bought, to cause, to possess. Now you have the concept in the law, when you go back to it, of someone being able to redeem, right, their uh, kins, kins folk, if you like. I'm looking for um, Nehemiah. So buying back, if someone went into slavery, you, know, you could pay a certain price. Like It's like bail, really. It's like bail. Oh, what am I on about? I just said Nehemiah. Scrolling all the way through there. There it is. Right, Nehemiah 5 and 8. And I said unto them, We after our ability have redeemed our brethren the Jews, which were sold unto the heathen. And will ye even sell your brethren, or shall they be sold unto us? Then they held their peace and found nothing to answer. So the idea of redeeming our brethren the Jews, that were sold unto the heathen, meaning they were bought back. I mean, this time, uh, Deuteronomy 28, 68, going to this new Egypt, you weren't going to be bought back. You weren't going to be redeemed. Okay, and You were going to be in perpetual slavery. You know, forever, as it says. Verse 46 again, we'll get it. It says, And they shall be upon thee for a sign and for a wonder, and upon thy seed forever. Now that's not forever, forever, even forever and ever. This is, but that's what our kingdom is going to be. Now this kingdom, Esau, Edom's kingdom is bound by time. The kingdom of Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, is not bound by time. It's infinite. Yeah? You can't... There'll never be a time once the kingdom's set up. Past that point, that the kingdom won't exist. <laughs> that's a long time, bro. That's a long time. So although we've, we've suffered great affliction and we're about to go through a time of Jacob's trouble, which is the largest trouble or the biggest amount of trouble Jake as a nation has ever been in. But on the other side, man, it's glorious. So there's a just way to this. And you look at the history, you think, shit. And then you look at the prophecy and you think, shit. And there's even more to come. But then you look at the prophecy past that, you think, yeah, man. I can't wait for that one. So, so to all things, there's a, a just wait, man. So Daniel 7 and 18, but the saints of the Most High, the saints being the Israelites, read Psalm 50 and 5, read Psalm 148 and 14. But the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever, even forever and ever. Yeah? So that's, that's what the ultimate is. Although we're so glad when the sun goes down in this kingdom, man, the, there's actually a scripture we could go to about the, the sun and the, the moon but we shall not you know, keep it short and sweet so although we suffer greatly on this kingdom you know, and we will have to and you know, we ought to as it says Acts 14 and 22 it says confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith and that we must through much tribulation enter into the kingdom of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai so all of this it's a refining process, man. As gold is tried in the fire, acceptable men in the furnace of adversity. And these are some historic accounts. But like we say, we're going to go through a time deeper than that. And more severe than that. But the Lord will cover his men in that time, or his elect in that time. Okay, so I will leave it there. I pray it was edifying, shalom. The more honour to the apostles and elders of great millstone that rule well and they bring the word and doctrine. All praises to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rukha Kudash. Shalom.